I've spent a lot of time in the last month or so talking about blend modes in Game Maker, and while there are a number of different effects that you can achieve in Game Maker just by using the default uh, GPU blend mode functions, there's also a handful of blend modes that you cannot achieve with simple uh, GPU blend mode functions. And today we're going to talk about all of the blend modes that cannot be achieved just by simple uh, GPU blend modes. We are instead going to write shaders to do this, and when I say today, I mean if I actually get through all 30-something of these blend modes in this one single video, I will actually be a little bit surprised. We've got a long road ahead of us. So, in addition to my usual demo program that I'll get to in a moment, I've also got a little uh, demo uh, Photoshop document, and this is just going to be a duck, a tree, and a checker background, and I'm going to be uh, showing off some of the built-in Photoshop blend modes um, just by literally scrolling through them in Photoshop so that you can see a little bit of what they do. Uh, I, as you can see, am using an ancient history version of Photoshop Elements 6, which came out in 2007, and there are a number of blend modes that modern Photoshop has available to it that I do not have and I uh, will not be able to show in the actual software itself, but uh, I will be implementing them all the same. So, over to this demo program. Uh, the way that it's set up, the one that I had open at the beginning of the video was a uh, my, uh, my test project that I did ahead of time. So I've got the tree, the checker background, and the duck. The tree and the duck are both being drawn onto uh, their own surfaces, firstly. So we're drawing the... Um, the duck onto a surface, and this is going to be considered the source uh, for the blending mode, for the, for the color blending, and we also have the same thing for the, uh, the tree. And then, uh, once we're done with that, we will combine them with a shader known as shd underscore fancy blending. Uh, we are going to uh, set the destination as a sampler, and then we are going to draw the source surface, and that is going to be our source and our destination. Uh, the blend mode index is going to be controlled just with uh, an integer uniform which we can scroll through with the left and the right arrow keys. And then over here in the actual shader itself, I have a whole bunch of, um, of shader functions that I have not yet implemented. Uh, we are going to be implementing these one by one in this video. There are quite a lot of them. Again, there's 30 something. And then down here in the main uh, GLSL, in the GLSL main function, uh, we are sampling the source color, the destination color, and depending on which blend mode we are using, so normal, uh, additive, subtractive, and so on and so forth, uh, we are going to call one of the blending functions that are defined above and will be filled in in due time. And they will take the source and the destination color, combine them in different ways, and then at the end we're just going to do the, uh, the source color times source alpha plus destination color times inverse source alpha, and that's going to be our final color. And also these four lines here, since the, um, some of the blending functions may spit out color channel values that are less than zero or greater than one. Um, it's not a bad idea to uh, constrain your color values like this uh, between a range of zero and one. Hey. So we've got our work cut out for us. If you want references to some of the locations on the internet where I got a lot of this information myself, I have some uh, references that are going to be at the top of the shader file. So before I get started, there are, as I'm sure you can imagine, a number of uh, bits of prerequisite knowledge that you're going to want to have before you try and do this. You are going to want to know how shaders work, obviously. You're going to want to know what uh, the different vector types are. You're going to want to uh, have some idea of the different operations that you can do on them, because that's what we're going to be doing to modify each of these color channels. Knowledge of surfaces isn't going to hurt, although I'm not going to be doing anything further with surfaces other than what I've already set up here to, um, to get the source and the destination uh, surfaces sampled from. Uh, likewise, you're also going to want to know about uh, shader samplers, although once again, uh, I'm not going to be doing anything with those beyond uh, what I've already set up, sampling from the source and the destination uh, samplers. Knowing how blend words work to begin with is going to be pretty critical because that's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to start by re-implementing some of the basic blend modes in GLSL, so additive blending, subtractive blending, that sort of thing. And if you know the words that I'm going to be throwing around for the next half hour, hour, or however long it ends up taking, uh, that's going to be a huge help. And when I get down towards the end, when I get down towards some of the, uh, the color modification blend modes, such as hue, saturation, luminosity, and that sort of thing, uh, it is going to be somewhat handy if you, uh, if you know what the hue, saturation, and lubians color model is. Or at least the hue, saturation, value color model, which I think seems to be the more common one, uh, which I've made videos on in the past. But knowing roughly what that refers to is going to help when we get down to the end. So, let's see, I can, uh, I think I can move this over to the side. Do I want to leave it open just as like a, a list of the blend modes that I'm going to implement today? I guess so. 
A bit of a long introduction, but let's be on our way. So blend mode normal, and this is a bit of a, a false start of sorts because blend mode normal is just implemented just sort of by default. Um, normal blending is going to be just returning the source color as it is without doing anything funny to it, and then doing the like the alpha blending at the end. And we actually don't need to do anything else to make blend mode normal work. So first one's free. Blend mode add, and there are a number of these blend modes that are uh, pretty straightforward how they work uh, based on the name. If you remember the general blending equation that I've talked about ad nauseum in past videos, we are literally just adding together the source and the destination color values. And again, since the alpha blending bits of the shader are taken care of at the bottom of the main function, we only really care about this term in that uh, general blending equation. So what's happening to the source color? And we can get away with simply uh, returning the source color plus the destination color. I will show these off uh, once I get uh, through with the next one. Next, we have subtractive blending. And if you were to once again look at the uh, blend mode equation that you would use for subtractive blending, uh, the part that we care about is going to be the destination color multiplied by 1.0 minus the source color, so the inverse source color. So I'm going to run the game now. And I'm going to start demoing these blend modes. So if I were to bring up Photoshop on the side, um, Photoshop actually does not have a subtractive blend mode, which surprises me every time I open it. At least my version of Photoshop doesn't. Linear Dodge, as I said, is Photoshop's version of Add. And if I were to uh, scroll on over to Additive Blending in this demo program, we can see that we've got basically the same thing. Subtractive Blending, we are subtracting the, um, the colors of the duck from what's already there. All right. Um, I have, for I guess various reasons, I've actually seen a couple different uh, versions of subtractive blending in a shader. Uh, the most straightforward way to do it is just uh, simply to say destination minus source, and that is um, pretty much what you'd expect it to be. And it looks pretty similar. It's a little bit darker. Maybe when it comes to subtracting colors, uh, you may view this as being a little bit more correct. And I believe the uh, the GLS LFI um, repository actually does it a third way, which is to add the source and the destination together and subtract one, which I feel like is going to give me a different result. Yeah, that doesn't that doesn't look look like what I'm I'm looking for. I'm gonna leave mine at destination minus source for now. Okay. Let's see. Uh, these are I'm gonna be committing uh, commits to this repository as I go. These are gonna be the uh, simple blending modes. Next, let's move on to something a little more complicated. I'm gonna be doing dark and light and multiply linear burn screen difference and exclusion. Uh, darken is going to be uh, simply put the min of the source and the destination. Uh, remember that a lot of the uh, arithmetic functions in GLSL uh, will work with vector types in addition to float types. So calling the min function on two vectors will return a vector of that same size with each of its components being the minimum value of the uh, input vectors. Uh, max, so blend mode lighten is going to be very similar. We're going to be instead we're going to be instead returning the maximum uh, color channels of the source and the destination. And I feel like that's what a lot of people think BM underscore max is for, the game maker blend mode, but it's not. And once again, I'm not sure why they called it BM underscore max when the name on that front is a bit misleading and probably summons to, to, summons to mind something along the lines of this. Anyway, multiply is pretty straightforward. This is a little bit easier to to figure out how to do yourself in a shader than it is with uh, GPU blend modes. Uh, so we're just going to take the source color, the, de the destination color, multiply them together, and then worry about alpha blending later on. Uh, linear burn. Oh, you know what? Um, where is GLSify? Because what they have for a subtract in GLSify is totally linear burn, isn't it? All right, I'm getting ahead of myself. So linear burn is going to be source plus destination. Um, minus 1.0. So that is going to be what I tried spitting out for a BM subtract before and uh, didn't really look very good. Next, scrolling down, screen is um, probably best described as the opposite of uh, multiply, or maybe the inverse of multiply. So screen is going to be achieved by uh, a couple things. So we're going to take 1.0 minus the source color. We're going to take 1.0 minus the destination color. So this is going to be the inverse source and the inverse destination. Uh, we are going to multiply these together. 
So we're going to multiply the inverse source by the inverse destination, and then we're going to take 1.0 minus that. And that is going to be the result for screen. Uh, again, more or less the inverse of vm underscore multiply. Uh, that's probably going to be the most complex of the uh, basic vector math blend modes because difference is going to be uh, you're going to take the absolute value of source and destination. Uh, the order is actually, it doesn't matter here, the order is independent. Uh, this is a commutative operation because uh, when you take the absolute value, the sign is going to be erased either way. And lastly, we have uh, exclusion, the, exclu the exclusion blood mode. And the best way that I can describe this is that very dark and very light colors, or at least very dark and very light uh, color channelers are going to be uh, magnified. So the way that we're going to implement this is going to be source plus destination minus uh, 2.0 multiplied by the source multiplied by the destination. And that is going to be our return value. So these are the basic vector math blend nodes. Uh, I'm going to run the game. And I'm going to uh, open up Photoshop. And for the for these, uh, these should all be implemented in my version of Photoshop. Do I have like, did I leave BM underscore max in this demo program? I did. Do I want it there? Yeah, it's not down there. All right, let me try that again with the correct labels. So, uh, darken, compare that to darken over here. All right, looks good. Lighten, we're going to use the lighten blend mode over here. Looks good. Multiply, uh, I think by now you've seen multiply the uh, multiplicative blending in a million different in a million different ways. You know what this looks like. That looks good. Uh, linear burn. Linear linear burn is over here. It's a little bit darker than multiply. Screen. Uh, I believe this is the one that I said was the, uh, the inverse of multiply. Although I don't really know how to like describe in words uh, what it does to the color. Although it, it looks it looks kind of like something like bathed in a halo of light or something like that. Um, difference uh, in Photoshop differences, I believe, down at the bottom there. All right, so the uh, Pixels that are uh, more different from each other are going to be brighter. And lastly, exclusion. And exclusion is going to... Boy, that's another one that I really have a hard time describing visually. The farther we go into this video, um, the more the more I'm probably just going to like give up trying to describe these effects visually. But that is the, uh, the basic vector math blend modes. What? Record this entire video, and then right before you go to post it, you find a couple of errors in the middle, and you have to re-record parts? Me? Nonsense. Anyway, color burn and color dodge, uh, counter to my assertion um, not too long ago, are actually uh, blend modes that can also be done in just one single uh, expression, one single mathematical expression like this of, uh, of vector operations. And that's good news, because that means the code is slightly easier to write than what I had uh, in the original version of this video. Uh, the code is slightly more performant because there's just like less stuff happening in it. And to, uh, to round out the trio of perfection, it, uh, it actually produces the correct result, whereas the uh, version that I initially wrote was slightly wrong. So color burn. This blend mode can be expressed as uh, 1.0 minus, double open parentheses, 1.0 minus the destination. So the inverse destination uh, divided by the source. And that's not too bad, but this does feature a little bit of a division. So the eagle-eyed observers among you may realize that uh, if any of the uh, source color channels are zero, then you're going to have a big old division by zero in here. Uh, division by zero is implemented by the floating point spec. You will just get an infinity, and you won't have like the shade of crash or anything. And while at the bottom in the blending stage, we are clamping the, um, the output values between zero and one, it is nicer to simply not have infinities in your code in the first place if you can avoid it. So uh, to handle that, we can say divided by, instead of simply the source, we can divide by the max of the source and some nominally small value, value like 0 0.01 like this. And that's going to prevent um, us from actually dividing by zero, which is good. 
Color Dodge is going to be a similar deal. We're going to divide the destination by uh, the inverse source color. So 1.0 minus the source color. Return that. And as before, this term can be um, infinity if 1.0 minus source. So if source, if any of the color channels on the source are equal to 1. So to get around with that, uh, we can divide instead by the max of that expression, the inverse source color, and 0.01. That's color burn and color dodge. I will share those off at the end of um, like this block of four blend modes. Uh, blend mode overlay is going to be a little bit more involved. Uh, technically, you can implement blend mode overlay and blend mode soft light um, as, dare I say, a single line of code if a very, very long line of code using um, the mix and step functions. But uh, that is going to make what I'm about to write even less legible than it's already not going to be. I'm going to start by defining a temporary uh, vector 3. I'm going to call it TMP. At the bottom of the blend mode overlay function, we're just going to return that. And this is where I'm going to get into um, doing operations on each of the components of the source and destination colors. So we're going to assign temporary color.red equal to the big long expression that I'm about to type out. And that's going to be dst.red greater than 0.5 followed by a conditional. Uh, we are going to be using a conditional here. Uh, obligatory shout out to conditionals being syntactic shorthand for if else statements. And every time I bring these up, I do have to mention that uh, there are certain people who love to scream on the internet about how if statements and shaders are bad and you should never ever use them if you don't want your shaders to run at like one FPS or whatever. But really, it's fine. Uh, for what I'm going to be doing here, it's going to be a simple assignment operation, a simple if else assignment operation. The people who create graphics cards and the people who create shader compilers are very, very smart. And um, things like basic conditionals and basic if else's and shaders are implemented in such a way such that um, as long as you're not doing any heinously complex logic or doing something expensive like sampling from a texture or something like that, then the performance impact of a, a conditional branch should be minimal. Anyway, the true uh, part of this uh, conditional, so the expression that we're going to return if this resolves true, is going to be uh, this monster 1.0 minus open parentheses 1.0 minus 2.0 times and I'm just going to spit out a lot of math in a short period of time. Let's see the quantity of destination.red minus 0 0.5 close parentheses close parentheses multiplied by uh, the quantity of inverse source color so source.red 1.0 minus source.red like this uh, close another close parenthesis to round off this expression here. That's going to be what happens if uh, destination.red is greater than 0 0.5. Otherwise, 2.0 uh, times destination.red times source.red. Source.red. Uh, so we're going to multiply source and destination and multiply by 2. And that's going to be what we return if this statement is not true. So if destination.red is uh, less than or equal to 0 0.5. And lastly, I need to do the same the same operation on the green and blue channels, uh, simply updating the updating the color channels as necessary. So we're going to be doing the same operation on red, green, and blue. Uh, once again, uh, you can do this using the mix and step functions if you really have that kind of a kind of an aversion to conditionals. But I'm not going to do that here because that code would be even uglier than what we have right now. And the blend mode soft light. The soft light blend mode is going to be uh, something similar. Uh, instead of checking if the destination.red is greater than 0 0.5, we're going to be checking if the source red is less than 0 0.5. And uh, instead of what we had before, uh, we are going to be writing the longest single line of code that you're going to see in this entire video. And I apologize for this, but this appears to be the math that the soft light blend mode uses. and um, just bear with me for a moment. Uh, so we're going to say 2.0, um, not minus, but multiplied by the destination.red, multiplied by the source.red, um, plus the destination.red times the destination.red. Or uh, does GLS still have a square function? It does not. Can we just like do power of this, of like destination.red to 2.0? Would that be a little bit, would that burn your eyes a little bit less? Anyway, 
So the destination dot red squared multiplied by quantity of 1.0 minus uh, 2.0 times source dot red, so not quite the not quite the inverse source alpha, um, not quite the inverse source color rather. Two parentheses, and that is going to close off the true part of this conditional, and followed by a colon. And in the false part of this conditional, uh, we're going to be returning the square root of the destination dot red multiplied by 2.0 times source dot red minus 1.0 plus 2.0 minus destination dot red uh, times the quantity of 1.0 minus source red, so the inverse source color. Are we good on that front? I think we are. Uh, I'm going to take this monster and replace the second and third lines of code with them like this. And once again, I apologize for this, this utter barbarity. Um, and once again, if you were a fan of the step and mixed functions, you could uh, at least, at the very least, be saved from writing this out three separate times, but I'm not going to. Uh, this is the longest single line of code in this entire video. Uh, as a general rule, I don't encourage copying and pasting my code when I make these videos, but I think for today, we have earned an exception, and if you don't want to type this all out by hand and um, risk typing it wrongly the first couple tries, uh, feel free to look for the GitHub repository down in the video description and uh, just borrow the uh, borrow the code for these blend modes out of the GitHub repository because nobody should ever have to be cursed to writing this out the long way um, for any reason whatsoever. So if I were to run this now, and if I were to um, not show my video editor, but if I were to go back, back to Photoshop and show off the color burn blend mode. Where are we? This is color burn. Uh, this looks good. If I move the duckling around, the original version that I wrote produced the wrong result on, um, on the white squares in the background. Um, this is next going to be color dodge. All right, this is what it looks like. So it's another one of the very... Uh, very loud, very bright, very overexposed sorts of blend modes. Okay, looks good to me. Overlay, and that looks like I've got a negative sign in there somewhere where I shouldn't. Um, okay, the math is right, but I am uh, accidentally assigning twice to uh, temp.blue instead of ever assigning anything to temp.green, and uh, therefore essentially preventing anything from being written to the green channel of the result color, so that's just going to be... Uh, red and blue, hence magenta. All right, let's go back to overlay. And overlay looks like this in Photoshop. Good. And overlay looks like this in Game Maker. Also good. And soft light. Soft light looks like this in Game Maker. And soft light is going to look similar to overlay in Photoshop. All right, so those are the... Uh, what I have dubbed the component-wise blend modes, although the first two kind of aren't, as it turns out. Um, if you if you uh, see the original code that I had for these as I scroll past uh, in the rest of the video, uh, you may notice the differences and you may notice where things go wrong. The rest of the blend modes I'm going to talk about in this video are going to be a lot simpler than soft light, fortunately. And with that, I'm going to cut back to me in the past. It looks like linear dodge is up next. This one is... I believe I've uh, cited this before as just being Photoshop's weird name for additive blending. So I can just, we can either do this ourselves, we can do this the long way, source plus DST, or we can just call a different function. We can just straight up call the function blend mode add like this. Doesn't really matter. If you prefer not to have like the extra function call when you compile the shader code. Although I think the shader compiler should be smart enough to inline uh, function calls like that anyway, so it would literally end up being basically the same assembly. Uh, you can just you can just write it out source plus destination. Hard light. This is going to end up being blend mode overlay with the input swapped. Uh, the fancy mathematical word for that would be commuted, so the inputs are going to be the other way around. So instead of saying blend mode overlay with source and destination, uh, we're going to be calling blend mode overlay with the destination and then the source. So we're going to swap the arguments around. You could write the whole thing out the long way again, but this is enough code that I feel a lot better about just calling the blend mode overlay function 
and, um, and swapping the arguments. Vivid light is going to be a little more complex. Uh, we are going to need to calculate first the result of color burn, the result of the color burn blend mode. Uh, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call this color burn as a vector three is going to be blend mode color burn. Uh, the source is going to be the destination. The uh, destination for color burn is going to be 2.0 times the source. So again, the arguments are commuted and source is going to be doubled. And we're also going to want to calculate vec3 color dodge. And that is going to be blend mode color dodge. Uh, the source for color dodge is going to be the destination. And the destination for color dodge is going to be 2.0 times uh, source minus 0 0.5, followed that up but with two closed parentheses to close that function call. And our temporary uh, value that we're going to be var temp, vec3 temp, uh, the temporary value that we're going to be uh, writing the values to is going to be uh, tmp.red is going to be uh, source.red is less than 0 0.5, then we are going to return color burn.red else we're going to return color dodge.red. And uh, again, this is going to be the same thing for the green, green please, and blue channels like this. So if the, uh, if the intensity of the red channel is less than 0 0.5, we're going to be going with the result of color burn. And if the value of the red channel is greater than or equal to 0 0.5, we're going to be going with the result of color dodge.red. Same for green, same for blue. And we can return the, uh, the temporary color vector down at the bottom over here. Uh, linear light is going to be pretty similar. Uh, so I'm going to be, again, copying and pasting so that I don't have to do a ton of rewriting the same code. Um, linear light, instead of using color burn and color dodge, is going to use linear burn and, as you can probably imagine, linear dodge. And the inputs are going to be the same, so uh, linear burn's source is going to be our destination color. Linear burn's destination color is going to be two times the source color. Uh, linear dodge's source color is going to be our destination color. Linear dodge's destination color is going to be two times uh, the source color minus 0 0.5. And then we're going to follow the same formula. Uh, Source.red is less than 0 0.5. If that is true, we are going to return lin um, linear burn.red, else we're going to return li linear dodge.red. And I guess I should probably update the names of these variables too, huh? And I guess uh, with that in mind, I could have just copied and pasted up here too and replaced the names of the variables. But No big deal. And returning the temp color. Okay. All right, pin light. It's one of the, uh, I, I like this as a name for a, um, a blend mode because it's rather evocative of a certain like photographic style. Anyway, this is going to be a third blend mode that is implemented the same as uh, the last two, except instead of uh, using one of the burn or dodge uh, blend modes, we are going to be using the min and, or at least the darken and lighten blend modes. So we're going to say, um, let's call it just darken and lighten. And this is going to be blend mode darken and blend mode lighten. The parameters passed into these two functions are going to be the same. So destination two times source, destination two times source minus uh, 0 0.5. And the values that we are going to be returning out of this. This is going to be if source.red is less than 0 0.5, return darken, return the darken value. Uh, otherwise, return the lighten value on all three color channels, and we can get rid of that, uh, that second return statement there. All right, let's run these. I can switch on over to, um, what's the first one up? Linear dodge added to blending. I'm pretty sure that I've shown this one off already, but just for the sake of consistency. Uh, where are you? Linear dodge added to blending. Looks good. Uh, hard light. All right, this looks like a slightly darker version of the original duck. Hard light is going to be here. All right, looks the same. Vivid light. All right, this is a uh, maybe a little bit of an overexposed version of the, of the duck. We can give you vivid light. Interesting. We have the opposite problem as before in that um, 
now Photoshop is the one that's got the like the yellow outline around the around the duck on the white square. Um, I uh, actually did not make a note of that when I was planning this out. That escaped my notice. We have linear light. Linear light is going to be the next one. This one is pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Looks like a slightly uh, lighter version of um, linear burn, honestly. Uh, pin light. The one with the names that I said I uh, quite like. Uh, pin light is over here. Looks the same. All right. I also realized, because I saw it in the list and I, I did not implement it, and I think it ended up in the, uh, the set of blood modes that I do not have in my version of Photoshop for some reason, even though it's actually there. Hard mix is another one, which uh, takes a similar form to, uh, to these five up here. And honestly, while my, uh, while my mind is on the subject, I might as well go and just implement that now. And I totally just copied down the wrong code for the wrong blend mode for this one. Let me try that again. Hard mix is going to look a lot like uh, some of the ones up here, but instead of being dependent on um, instead of being dependent on like darken or lighten or anything like that, uh, we are simply going to um, take the sum. So we can say vec three sum is going to be either source plus dst, or if you like being fancy, uh, sum is going to be the result of blend mode add source and destination like that. And if the sum dot red is less than uh, 1.0, then we are going to uh, return 0, 0.0. Otherwise, we are going to return 1.0. So if the um, if the sum of the two color channels is less than 100%, then we're going to be just rounding it basically down to zero. Otherwise, we're going to be setting it to 1.0. And if I were to run the game now, and if I were to compare that to the uh, hard mix um, version of the blend mode that's actually in Photoshop, we should see something that looks pretty much the same. All right, great. And now that I say that out loud, now that I say that out loud, can I just get away with return essentially floor of the sun? Because if it's less than one, it'll be rounded down, and if it's greater than one, it'll be it'll be set to one. And wow, okay, cool. Um, gonna make a uh, might leave a comment on my uh, my sources for this video, uh, explaining that that is a somewhat simpler way to do this, right? You can either do this directly, or you can actually call the uh, the added blending function like this. Anyway. That's hard mix. See, where was I? Going back up, uh, I've already gotten through like all these linear light, pin light, and I'm just left with the other color operations and the blend modes that I don't have access to in Photoshop. Okay, so because I expect these to take much shorter than the color operations, uh, blend mode average, this is another one of those blend modes that I'm sure you can guess how it works just by the name. We're going to be taking the average of the source and the destination values. So adding source and destination and dividing by two. Reflect is going to be another one of the component-wise blend modes like we have up here. So if I were to copy and paste the uh, one of those, and if I were to uh, write a few conditionals, uh, reflect is going to be if source.red is equal equal to 1.0, then we're going to return source.red. Otherwise, we're going to return destination.red divided by uh, 1.0 minus source dot red. I missed the term, so we're going to square destination dot red. So we're going to multiply by itself, and then divide it by uh, the um, the inverse source red like this. So the quantity one minus source red, and that's going to do it for each of our color channels here. So green and blue, green and blue. I feel like I'm like my optometrist who's repeatedly switching between like two different lenses and just saying their names over and over like 10 times so I can try and figure out which one looks clearer when I say green and blue like that. Hey. And um, I'm just going to double check this one real quick to make sure that I got it right because as I said, I do not have basically like a control group for this in actual Photoshop that I can check it against if I made a mistake. And it looks like I did indeed copy that down correctly. All right. 
Next, uh, blend mode glow is going to be quite simply uh, blend mode average commuted. So this is going to be blend mode average with the source and the destination swapped around. All right, that one's easy enough to implement. Uh, negation, this is going to be look a little bit like the uh, the difference blend mode. So this is going to be 1.0 minus the absolute value of one minus source color minus destination color. That's going to be our negation. Uh, Phoenix, which is another one which is in the in the running for the coolest name for a blood node ever. Uh, this is going to be min of source and destination minus the max of source and destination uh, plus one. So this is the difference between basically the darkened blood node, the lightened blood node, and then you add one to that. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why they call it Phoenix, why it was called Phoenix, assuming Adobe is the one who made it up anyway. Uh, I assume they had a reason for it. And then lastly, we have Substract, which is not Subtract, but uh, Substract with an extra a second S in the middle there. And that is going to be Source plus Destination minus 1.0. And if I were to run the demo now, I am missing something. Did I miss a .rgb somewhere? Oh, that's a... Uh... Huh. I'm surprised I haven't done that earlier in this video. How long have I been going for? This recording is an hour long. I'm surprised I didn't mess that up until now. So this is Substract Phoenix, which is sort of like a, a fancy like coloring version almost. Uh, negation, Hard Mix, uh, we already talked about that one. Uh, glow, Reflect, and Average. Honestly, average is like normal blending with um, just the opacity set to 50%. Like that is literally what average is uh, because this is what you would get if you did the source alpha, inverse source alpha thing with uh, source alpha of 0 0.5. But it was in the list, so I'll throw it in here. Um, or at the very least, like it was in it was in uh, Jamie Owens' list. So if, uh, if they think it's important enough to add to GLS LFI, uh, whether or not it's actually from Photoshop or from somewhere else, I will also do the same here. All right, I can write down a commit. I can commit that. And all that's left are hue, saturation, luminosity, color, darken color, and lighten color. And, oh boy, I, um, I said that this is going to involve a couple additional helper functions. Uh, to do things like get the luminosity from a color. If you've watched the videos that I made in the past about things like luma and grayscale and that kind of thing, this should look very familiar indeed. This is just dotting the input color against the um, like the luma, the luma weights, and returning the luma for the luminosity. Set luma is a little bit more involved because it uh, when you convert that back to red, green, and blue, um, there's a little more math there. Uh, saturation. So get saturation and set saturation. Um, again, about a year ago, I made some YouTube videos on hue, saturation, and value in shaders in Game Maker. Uh, this is basically the ugly way of doing hue, saturation, and value and that kind of thing in a shader because it doesn't use it doesn't like take advantage of vector operations that you can do or anything like that. But it will get the job done. And if you uh, happen across a more elegant solution for hue, saturation, and luma. Um, in GLSL, you should just be able to swap those in and as long as the inputs and outputs are as expected, um, the program will work the same. Um, I did say that I don't want to spend too much time ruminating on these, so instead we'll just hop straight into blend mode hue. And this is going to, um, these next six blend modes are going to be swapping around hue, saturation, and luma values of the source and destination colors in different ways. Uh, blood mode hue is going to take the source's hue, the destination saturation, and the uh, destination's luma. Also, and I forget if I said this at the beginning because I've been re recording this video forever, but um, hue saturation value versus hue saturation luma. Um, luma, 100% luma, uh, will um, like wash out the color to white and 0% luma will wash out the color to black, whereas 100% uh, value will just be like the saturated version of that color. And if you want to wash it out to white, you would also have to decrease the saturation in turn. I don't know if that's exactly mathematical equivalent, but let's get on with it. The result of blend mode hue, we are going to be borrowing the hue from the source color 
Uh, we are going to be borrowing the saturation from the destination color, and we are going to be borrowing the luma slash lumians from the destination color. And that is the general formula that all of these uh, color HSL uh, related blend modes is going to, to follow. We're going to be combining the source and destination hue, saturation, and lumians in different ways. And I'm going to try and walk through this step by step instead of just doing it all in one line the way that, uh, uh, where are we? The way that this Photoshop blend modes in HLSL article does, which by the way, uh, that is where I, I can't say I straight up copied and pasted, but I did adapt the code from HLSL to, uh, to GLSL and I tried to clean up the formatting a little bit. And that is the naming convention that, uh, that author used for these various functions. And that is uh, also the naming convention that I'm going to use for these functions. So let's start out with, I did it again, a vector three called TMP. Uh, we're going to start, TMP can equal the source color. Uh, the temporary color can equal the source color. Then we are going to edit the saturation of this color. So we can say TMP temporary color is gonna be color set saturation of basically itself, the current color and color underscore get saturation of the destination color. And then we can uh, TMP equals color set uh, lumens, luma, luma, luminosity, I believe is the function name of the temporary color and the color get luminosity of the destination color. And then we can return that color. And the next five, or at least the next three of these blend modes are gonna be similar. Uh, dark in color and light in color are a little different, but we'll get there quickly enough. Uh, blend mode saturation, this is going to use the hue of the destination, the saturation of the source. Uh, so we can use the, um, we don't have a get hue or set hue function here because we don't really need it because the uh, the hue is just being obtained from basically the original color without doing any modification. Uh, so if, if we want to start with the hue of the destination color, we can set our uh, temporary color val variable to um, the destination color first. We can set the saturation as we're doing next to the saturation of the source and we can set the luminosity to the luminosity of the destination. And then we can uh, we can return that color. Okay, blend mode luminosity. And I hope I get through this quickly because my uh, voice is starting to, starting to go because this is a really long video. Uh, luminosity is going to use the hue of the destination, the saturation of the destination and the source, uh, the, the luma rather of the source. And if you followed along so far, you can probably guess which of these values are going to go where. So the hue of the destination, we're going to start with setting the, um, the temporary color to the destination because we're going to inherit its hue, saturation, and luminosity. Uh, next, we're going to set the saturation of this, uh, this color to the saturation of the destination. But if you're paying attention, you'll realize that this is a bit redundant because we'll basically be setting the saturation of this color to the whatever it already was before. So we can just straight up get rid of that line of code. And the luminosity that we are setting is going to be the luminosity of the source over here. And we're gonna return that value. Blend mode color is going to be um, not all that different. So we're gonna start off with the hue of the source. We're gonna start off with the saturation of the source and we're going to finish with the luminosity of the destination. So again, we could set the saturation of this intermediate temporary color to the saturation of the, um, the source color, but once again, that will be redundant because we're setting the saturation back to itself. So we can simply uh, color set luminosity, temporary color, and then the luminosity of the destination and return that. These last two are gonna be a little bit different. Uh, they will, they'll really work similarly to the uh, darken and lighten blend modes that we described at the beginning of the video, but instead of just uh, straight up doing the min or the max of each color channel, uh, we're going to be looking at the min and max of the uh, the luma values. So we can say uh, color dot, uh, underscore get luminosity of the source is less than color get luminosity of the destination. If that is true, it's 
drop those in parentheses just for our readability. If that is true, we're going to return the source. Otherwise, we're going to return the destination. I don't know why I got rid of the return statement there when I started that. So if the luminosity if the luminosity of the source is lower than the luminosity of the destination, we're going to return the source. So we're going to return the color with a lower luminosity. And uh, if you cannot hazard a guess at um, exactly how the light and color blend mode is going to work, then I don't know what to say. And that is just going to be if the luminosity of the source color is uh, greater than or equal to the luminosity of the destination color, then return the destination color, otherwise return the source color. Sorry, other way around. In addition to what I just said, if you saw that typo before I did, congratulations, you are paying more attention than I am. All right, let's run this. And this should hopefully be everything we need. The shader is compiled on the first time without issue. That's always nice to see. So if I'm gonna come down to hue, that's interesting. That's like a, I don't know, a duck that's been buried in the, buried in the mud or something, hue. I love the rectangular eyes in this blend mode. It's very funny. What's next, saturation. That, that's another one that looks like a duck that's like buried in the, buried in the grass. If you wanted to have like a stealth game or something and you wanted to have someone hiding in the grass, you could do that. Um, that doesn't look like luminosity, that is color. All right, that is color. I guess I put them in a the, the different order than what's in my version of Photoshop. Uh, we have luminosity up next. Over here, looks good. And then we actually have two more that are not in my version of Photoshop. So dark in color and light in color. Uh, these are functionally opposites of each other. So the colors that are um, removed from the source in darker color are the only colors that are visible in lighter color. Uh, if you were to combine these two images together, you would see the original sprite. Uh, sadly, I do not have dark in color or light in color in my, my Photoshop over here. It is an interesting effect, uh, one must admit. So that is all 30 something of these blood modes. So this is going to be the uh, hue, saturation, and lightness related blend modes. This should also, if you've been paying attention so far, this should also give you some ideas. If you want to implement a blending, blending in a way that is not available in, in like Photoshop stock blend mode list, uh, it should give you some ideas of what you can do yourself to the color values to blend colors together in interesting ways. Uh, there are infinitely many mathematical operations that you can perform on the source and the destination color. Um, as for the practicality of this shader itself, I suppose you can just do a big old if else Christmas tree like this in a shader. Branching around a uniform is functionally free because all code paths of whatever you're trying to draw will follow the same code path. So if you're just comparing a uniform to a, um, to a single value, that's essentially free as far as uh, shader performance goes. I kind of feel like it would be less, uh, say, spaghetti to implement different shaders for these different blend modes if you wanted to. But um, maybe uh, best practices in game design are not the subject of this particular video. So if you want to just uh, take this big old list of blend modes and um, do as you will with them in the fragment shaders main method, uh, feel free. The fra fragment shaders main function, feel free. An hour 35. This one's going to be a nightmare to edit. I'm going to end this off here. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. Uh, generally, I would advise against just straight up copying and pasting my code and inserting it into your own projects. But in this case, this is one of those cases where I would not blame you if you did because a lot of this is just really tedium. Anyway, I try to post about two game dev videos a week. Uh, one tutorial tutorial like this and one let's make a game currently bullet hell. I try to not make videos that are this long as a regular habit, but if I split this one up, I feel like that would have been awkward. Regardless, if you want to see more of the weird stuff you can do in Game Maker with things like 3D and shaders, feel free to subscribe. If you want to contribute to the channel, I have a Patreon, which can be found in all the usual places. I say this at the end of, um, at the end of pretty much every one of these videos, but especially today after this one, I would definitely appreciate it if you wanted to pledge. This is probably the last video on color and blending that I'm going to be doing. 
So after this, I'm going to be posting a channel update and then uh, moving on to some other things. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Kiexi, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end like this, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.